everybody welcome back to checkpoint on campus norris howard here and joined alongside jacob brothers my co-host don't forget we are the voice of college esports only the best of the best and right now we have a legend in the casting game we have reforged joining us right now listen this this man is casting everything under the sun card games mobas fighting games farming simulator i don't know every time <laughs> I have seen this guy. He is casting a new game. Reforce, thank you for joining us here on On Campus. Hey, I'm always happy to join you guys and be able to help my fellow soon-to-be professional casters get into the industry, collect that bag, and uh, live the dream life, right? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And, you know, we, we, we brought you here because we see in college esports, as much as this thing continues to grow, that means we need more casters. And what we're seeing is a lot of times you got a, a coach who's just not playing that day or, uh, you know, they grab some kid from the journalism department because he's got a nice voice, but they don't have necessarily the training or the skills to really be a top level shoutcaster. So the first question I wanna ask is, when you're approaching a broadcast, when you're finally given the opportunity, what are some things that you need to work on in the run up to that first broadcast? No, that's a, that's a beautiful question because I'm very much, you know, a couple of years ago was in that exact position. Uh, when I got hired to, you know, work, the uh, Fortnite Grand Finals uh, for ECAC out in Albany, New York. And I'd never worked a Fortnite event. And I was like, okay, how do I do this? Like, how do I make sure I don't make a damn fool out of myself on camera? And the first thing that I would tell you to do is you gotta put in the hours of work. Uh, you don't know how often another opportunity is gonna come. You don't know who you're gonna meet at that particular event. So you wanna make sure you put your best foot forward. I always tell you that in addition to being able to put the time in to play the game, you don't have to be great. You just have to know what's going on. I would put another 20 hours, and this is my number that has been gotten me from step one to where I am today. It's 20 hours of watching other people commentate the game. And so when I was getting ready for Fortnite, it was, you know, watching all of the top pros. I would watch an hour here, see what they were saying. I would watch other people who were like me, who are hosts or play-by-play. -play. I would see what they were doing and I would take notes and I would write down, okay, this is a strategy, this is what's going on. And as somebody who was like a professional card game player previously, it was, it really made a lot of sense. It was like, this is my deck, okay? And I got a play test and I got to make sure that I know what's going on and I have to know the terminology. and. I would tell you, you know, now everything's for more virtual as opposed to in person. So a little bit different, but don't be afraid to take notes. Don't be afraid to bring notes. Everything, you know, in college, it's not open book, right? But in esports, it's very much open book. And the people that I've studied under and worked with are some of the most meticulous note takers that you can have. Uh, so whether it's you're doing play by play, whether you're doing an analyst work or a host, you have those notes, know what you want to say. And before that, also know what the storylines are going in. Um, it's important to tell that story. And whenever I get hired, it's mostly because they say Rob is a great storyteller. They're not always like Rob's the best play by play guy or whatever. It's like Rob is the best storyteller we have. And you want to make sure that even if someone doesn't know the game at all, they're watching League, they don't know the difference between, you know, a last hit or a first hit. They don't know anything. Um, you want to be able to make sure they can tune in and still root for someone because you've given them an opportunity to understand it on a different level. And if they want to dig deeper, they will. But, um, you know, overall, it's 20 hours of study, tell a good story, uh, and then also and smile. You know what I mean? <laughs> Put a happy <laughs> like face on it. No, it doesn't, everything's Looks not like super you're serious. Fun. Uh, yeah, I have a question about terminology, actually. So, because <clears throat> I watch a lot of... Uh, excuse me, <clears throat> a lot of collegiate overwatch. And so yeah. I'm kind of curious. So like when you're casting something, is it more about kind of like saying the information that you're seeing in different ways? Like you alternate between the team names, the player names, the hero names, the names of the abilities. So like, cause I only imagine that uh, overtaking a point can only happen so many different ways. Right? right. And so is it really just kind of relaying that information with just different words and different slots? Yeah. I mean, there's, 
that happens a lot, especially in sports games too. You can only say goal so many times. <laughs> you can say touchdown so many times, right? So, and it's really easy. And this is one of the things that as a new caster, you will do this, I promise you. And I'm gonna give you the same advice I give every other person. You're gonna get your first job and you are gonna say the same exact thing 15 times. You're gonna do it. You're gonna say, oh, and then it happened like that. And then it happened like that. Or absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Like you just, you kind of just fall into this, um, uh, I'm trying to think of the best, a, a crutch of a favorite word or a favorite phrase. And afterwards you'll do your review of your video and you'll be like, oh my God, I cannot believe I said absolutely 75 times. <laughs> like it, it will happen to you. So what I tell you to do is, like I said, with Overwatch, if you know that there's going to be a certain terminology that you're going to have to use over and over again, write the original word down and then write 10 different ways to say it underneath that. And then through your cast, and this comes back to having good notes, is through the cast, cross out every time, you know, that you've used one of those words or put a, um, a tick mark by it so that maybe, if, you know, you can go back and use the same words. But you just want to make sure that you're cycling through your terminology and that you're just not saying the same thing. And, and Fortnite, it's another thing. It's kind of the same thing. It's like you just don't want to be saying the same thing because people will start, I don't want to say it becomes a meme, but it kind of does. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> also you just want to be fresh. You want to know when somebody tunes into you, they're not going to hear the same thing. And um, the first time I worked the virtual Bundesliga, which is, you know, a FIFA league, uh, I've watched soccer my whole life. And, you know, when they score, they're just like, what a terrible goal, what a terrible, or what amazing save or whatever it is, right? So you have these adjectives for whatever the shot was or whatever the goal was. So I had a paper of like, 15 to 16 different like adjectives that I wanted to use before a goal and like into like hour four I was like I had run out of stuff and I was like oh man do I want to go absolutely uh, I guess or do I want to say beautiful do I want to say you know something <laughs> like that I'm just like what a beautiful header you know <laughs> it's just like yeah I, so it was when I watched it back I was like oh that sounds way better because now I can see like I I used it here and then I used terrific here and then I used sensational here uh and you know and I find that it just worked for me to be able to have a laundry list of different things I could reach into yeah. my little bag of. That's awesome. And it, listen, one of my favorite adjectives is magisterial. Uh, oh, and hey. I, I, I love that one. But um, I want to ask something. <laughs> As one, I've always, uh, one thing I've always been curious about when it comes to casting is <laughs> how do you strike the balance between being, you know, bombastic and charismatic versus showing off game knowledge because there are certain um casters that i really love listening to because they have that sort of intrinsic game knowledge they know beyond just the terminology they have a love of the strategy and this especially happens with one person uh casts uh mm -hmm. not so much when you have play by play and color but how do you find to strike that balance? Because obviously, like you say, you put in the work, you do the study. Um, how do you find that right balance between just saying something's amazing and then maybe going back and breaking it down further? It's hard. That is the that is a question that all of us ask ourselves every time we get on a show. It's how deep do you want to dive? Um, do you want it to be more casual? So when I did the Collegiate Star League stuff for Magic, we would do a little bit of both, but we would have a conversation before the show with the producer and be like, do we want to go way down the rabbit hole? Do we want to explain everything in these uh, pro level details? And they were like, no, not really. We want to kind of keep it high level. So that's really a question you want to have with your show's producer beforehand. Like if it's a really big event, like let's say we're doing a Dota minor. Okay, that's a big event. Uh, you don't want to keep it really um, nebulous on that kind of deal because the people who tune in, they know the game. They know what's going on. They want to hear uh, all of the strategy. They want to hear what's going to happen. Like you're not going to go uh, watch, you know, the LCS and they're going to be like super high key, you know, like, oh, look, look, here's a great fight. No, they're going to explain it to you, you know, all what happened in the team fight, breaking it down, like, oh, you know, here's what happened with this, you know, misfortune jumps in and whatever, like, that will, they'll go into that. So you just have to know your audience. Um, right. Same thing when we did um, the uh, Madden Championship for Fox Sports. It was like the, kind of at the beginning of the pandemic, a lot of the people who are watching wouldn't know anything about Madden. 
So we're not going to talk about how to glitch the defense. We're not going to talk about that kind of stuff. We're going to talk about regular football because that's what right. they know. So uh, I would tell you again, if it's also if it's your first cast um, or one of your first, it's and it's a game you know. It's really easy to fall into that rabbit hole because you know the game, right? Like if if you know Overwatch, you know you might start talking about like a whole lot of strategies that people like maybe they're not on reddit every day right they're not in like the overwatch <laughs> you know um chat rooms to know all that kind of stuff so you know it's it's going to be a balancing act but it's also who you are like are you a person that loves to go deep into detail are you a person that is funny like i generally tend to be somebody who is bombastic and loud and yelly screamy like i have fun and we laugh and i make fun of people and i roast them all the time um i'm not generally like the person who's going to break down like the you know a millisecond by millisecond type things that are going on but that's just me and that's what i've found after trying to be these other things um over the last couple of years so yeah um, and and, yeah. and and so just very quickly just because we're running a little bit out of time here yeah for sure um if if there was you know one thing for somebody who's maybe a little bit a, a, a little bit apprehensive in terms of getting into shout casting maybe they really enjoy it maybe they've taped themselves at home what would you say is the first step that somebody needs to take in order to maybe get themselves involved with the shout casting Really quickly, I would tell you to download four or five 30 second clips of either your favorite game or games that you want to work in. Get those downloaded, do a sample cast just by yourself at home, you know, where you're just doing play by play for that little bit, create a reel. Once you have that reel, go out and send it to every person that you know who could possibly hire you for something and continue to do that until you get hired. That's what, that's literally what I did. And it worked and once you get that opportunity get those 20 hours in or more take advantage of it and continue to network as much as you can every day from there on awesome reforge we thank you so much for sharing that knowledge and expertise uh where can we find you do are there any casts for you coming up pretty soon where we can hear to listen to the buttery silky smooth <laughs> cast so uh you can find me at reforge everywhere on social media and that's r-e-f-o-r-g-g -G. uh i am also uh right now we're doing stuff with the um, ultimate gaming league which is owned by nfl players and then they have casual esports players so you know definitely if you are into fifa madden call of duty um nba 2k there's going to be free agent tournaments. We would love to see you maybe play on Marshawn Lynch's team or Chad Ochocinco's team or any of these other NFL guys. And, but yeah, having a great time, always happy to come and uh, share some knowledge with my folks at home. Awesome.